Hey everyone, it's Mark Zanetto here. So I'm on vacation right now, but instead of taking a day off, I thought it would be fun to reminisce a bit. Remember that epic live show we did right after UConn clinched the sixth national title and went back to back. Well, I wanted to share that glorious episode with you again and repurpose it to a certain degree. You are locked on UConn, your daily podcast on the UConn Huskies. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm at a loss for words. All I can say is we went back to back. Uh, I just, listen, special Locked On UConn live edition. I, I knew this was going to happen, but I am so freaking pumped. Let's go. You are Locked On UConn, your daily podcast on the UConn Huskies, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And we're live, back to back, baby. Sorry, I had to do a little spot for uh, for Locked On. Dan Hurley and the UConn Huskies going back to back. This smile is not going to leave my my face for a while. Um, 75 to 60, just a phenomenal, hope you guys won all your future bets, uh, as I did. Um, I'm just, I'm just really pumped for this. What can we say? Right. I mean, listen, I'm going to throw the, I'm going to throw the comment section because listen, guys, you guys got to just steer me on this because this has just been a fun, fun ride. Um, I'd like to point out that the game went exactly as I talked about today. I got killed by some Purdue fans in my YouTube comments. Surprise, they're so quiet now, I guess. Um, let them have 50. I don't care. That's all I said. As long as it doesn't couple with someone else. And God, it's just, yeah, Wes, you're right. This isn't supposed to happen, but it did. Um, where do I begin? Well, first off, I'd like to point out, I'd like to point out that in this podcast world, I am the only podcast that is undefeated since it started. I started on March 1st. I have not resided over a loss. So you're welcome. First off, so I'd like to point that out. Uh, secondly, this is a dream for me. I am so excited to be, to have this platform, to talk UConn hoops with all of you beautiful people, even all of the people that hate on us because it's only going to get worse. Um, I honestly think now is such a wonderful time for reflection to kind of talk through all of these kind of demons we had as, as kids when we, you know, we were UConn fans and everyone would say, yeah, Jim Calhoun can win the big one. Um, you know, there's there's no way that a team from Stores, Connecticut, Cow Country, um, they're they're not going to be able to you know pull out a title. You know, they can't get the players. And here we are, more titles than Duke, tied for the same amount of titles as North Carolina. Living in North Carolina, I know exactly what that means. It makes me so happy that we have more titles than Duke. I still can't fathom it. I texted my buddy Mike and Casey, who gets constantly gets shout outs on this. Um, that uh we when we were kids, did you ever think we would be here? And he said no, because it's not like rooting for the Yankees, it's not like rooting for a pro team. And I know kids come and go, they're there two, three, four years sometimes, sometimes one. But man, I just I just never thought I'd ever be in a situation where I'm rooting for a team that goes back to back like this. It's uh it's it's so great. Let's get into the game a little bit. Um well first off, again, toot 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 my own horn. Um I'm gonna clip some stuff tomorrow. You bet your ass I'm going to, because I said 
Um, and I'm going to pull this quote up because this SOB in my mentions said to me, man, you don't watch a lot of Purdue, do you? Um, where, where is this guy? There's so many, there's so much crap on here. I'm so thankful to have this platform to where, where people actually comment the things I say. I never thought that was going to happen, but, um, some to the effect of, you know, I think he deleted it. Um, basically just off of the, the entire show, which I said, let Zach Eady get his, and we're not going to worry about doubling. We're not going to worry about that. And I did say, you know, at some point when Samson Johnson's in the game, you're going to get some doubling done because that's just how you just have to. I, oh God, while we're talking about that, Alex Caravan, Alex Caravan, please, my friend, stay one more year. Not because you're not an NBA player, not because you can't play at the next level, but because you could usher in this new era of players that come in here. Um, and God, it just it just wouldn't see be the same without you. I know that sounds weird, right? Um, you could probably say that about Donovan too, but you know, Alex is a six foot eight forward that just God, he just he creates so many winning plays. Blocks tonight. And shout out um my buddy Chris Smith. Um, who mentioned this on you know and, and tweeted it out about how he's so underrated on defense and blocking shots. I just I, I feel the exact same way. I mean, I said it a long time ago. If anybody watches this religiously, you're my every day, or and you you heard me say that a month ago. Hook, s- send me the clip. I I, I I I Caravan has just been so fantastic. Um, Tristan Newton. As much as we complain about Tristan Newton, where would we be without? This guy, did he win um, most most outstanding player of the of the final four, or um, or was that Cam? Um, it, it's just unfathomable. And Dave Portnoy just tweeted this out. I guess he no he. I guess this is from March 11, two thousand sixteen. The thing I love about UConn is you have to kill them a hundred times in March before they die once. And as much as I think Dave Portnoy is a colossal d bag, <laughs> he's so he's so spot on. Pop Smoke, what's up, dog? Yo, um, yeah. Not, listen, um, that's true, but I, I don't I, I, listen, man. You, Donovan comes to stores, wins one title as a freshman, second title as a sophomore. You think he's staying? Just build the man a statue and move on. Um, bring in some other dudes to kind of, you know, to take it on. I would say to you, it's it's going to be interesting because now Dan Hurley has another another challenge. What's he going to say now? Is he going to say, listen, how about a three-peat? It hasn't been done since UCLA. Why not us? We, could, we did it this, and no one thought we were going to do it again. Um, yeah, he does need to improve his free throws, but it's all good. Let's not worry about that that right now. I almost cursed. Um, don't don't take me there, Pop. Listen, we ain't talking about deficiencies right now. We're talking about titles and how good we are. Because we're the best in the best in the country. This is the best team ever, as far as I'm concerned. And you want to know why I'm gonna say that? Because as good as the UNLV teams were, they didn't go back to back. As good as that Duke team is, they didn't have to deal with transfer portal. They didn't have to deal with people sliding money under your door and saying, "Oh, hey, you just you just come over to Memphis and we'll you know we'll uh, we'll take care of you here." Um, didn't have to worry about um, you know guys doing commercials. Didn't have to worry about um, people leaving and then being able to play right away. If a guy transferred back in 1991, coaches were like, "Bye," because they didn't have to deal with them for two years. You'd figure out a way to stop him in another year or two. But if a guy transferred now, he he literally could go. He literally could go to your rival and play against you next year. And he could do it twice. So I'm not against transfer portal. I think, you know, for one, two time transfers, I don't care if people go every year. But the idea that this is somehow almost like a diminished thing, that's just another way to knock Dan Hurley. How about Dan Hurley? I'm just watching the 
the pictures on the the screen here him taking a picture with his family if anyone thinks that this dude is going to kentucky after this get your head examined it ain't happening this team is these coaches aren't going anywhere some players are going to leave we're going to get some players back but it's just going to be a never-ending cycle now why not cam freaking spencer Cam Spencer, if you're in this, if you're in this right now and you have visibility of the chat, tell me your thoughts about Cam Spencer because I have my own. And that dude is an absolute psycho, a dominant, just take every ounce of his ability and then add desire and drive and showed it, showed all of it today. Let everyone know who he was. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for your role. That's why I use LinkedIn Jobs. When I used to run my own business, I remember searching for my latest team member. It was such a breeze with LinkedIn Jobs. You have the tools to help you find the right professionals faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just a job board. It connects you with professionals you can't find anywhere else, even those who aren't actively searching for a new job, but might be open to the perfect role. Did you know that over 70% of LinkedIn users visit our leading job sites? If you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong place. Plus, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours on LinkedIn. I experienced it firsthand in my own business. Hire professionals like a professional on LinkedIn. Check out LinkedIn Jobs today. Wes, take it easy, buddy. Money isn't everything. And let me tell you something right now. I understand the alert. I get it. But I've been to, to Lexington. I've sat in those stands. It ain't worth it. This, this dude, Dan Hurley, is trying to spend the rest of his life becoming a better person. And his wife is angling for him to continue to do that work, do meditation, therapy, whatever it looks like. If he goes to Kentucky, all that goes out the window because it is a toxic, toxic environment. Hell no. They can they can keep their money because UConn should do whatever it takes to keep my man and continue this incredible run. The way I look at it, if we lost tonight, I think he would have left. Some uh, you know, or or entertained it. The fact that we won, now he's got his challenge. No one's ever done three in a row since UCLA. Think about it. Think about Dan Hurley's mindset. Now he's got a challenge here. Reset. He's going to lose some players. Um, Cam is gone. Uh, Castle will be gone. Klingon will be gone. He's got to restart. He's got to see if Alex will come back. Hassan has already said he's coming back. Um, they got Ahmad Noel, Isaiah Abraham. They got the guys, Stewie, Solo. Um, looks like we're getting Christ uh, from St. Joe's. That's not a joke. That guy's name is Christ. Um, so, look, we'll see. There's there's some pretty big names in the transfer portal already. All that starts tomorrow. How crazy is that? It'll all start tomorrow. Um, and shout out to the Big Ten. Liam McMealy. Yeah, Bob, I got you. Um, I think he's definitely on our list. I, but I also feel like if Alex stays, do you think I don't think Liam comes? Um, so that's kind of like a we'll see. Is Cam the best UConn transfer ever? I mean, he's gotta be. Actually, no, he's not. Tristan is. Flat out. Um, I don't think Solo's transferring out, Bill. I don't think so. But let's tackle this. <clears throat> Been fly since eighty five. I like it. I've been fly since eighty one. Um, no, I think uh, I think Tristan Newton is by far the best transfer in UConn history. Comes here, wins two titles, two beats one every time. I love Cam, but Tristan is better as far as best transfer ever. Um, yeah, Alberto, I got you, and I'm, I'm with you. 
Steph, I already got you. Newton definitely is. Bill, don't worry about solo ball. They're going to have a conversation with him. He's going to get big time run next year. Big time. And the kid can play. He's not transferring out. If he is, come come at me later. But I don't th- I don't think it's happening. Um, yes, sir, Ryan. How about we go back to back to back? Let's talk about it. Come on, man. Let's get into it. Why not? Who who like there's there's not a team that you go, oh well, I mean, they got all these guys coming back. You know, we have the best coach in the country. He's shown that he can get transfers. We just went back to back. NIL is popping. I'll have Mark D'Amelia on tomorrow. I'll talk to him about that and how we can get going. Um, why not go back to back to back? Never been done. Let's let's be the mini UCLA. Uh and and, and start that run. Let's go. Where are you at? I get this off. <laughs> what did he say? He's not going to that forest, Yukon. I, I don't know. Yep. Let's go, baby. Three Pete. Um, yeah, look, it's been, yeah, we had Yukon, Florida, Duke, UCLA won from 67 to 73 and from 60, 64 and 65. So let's go. Um, why not? Why not a three P? But I was getting ready to make fun of the Big Ten. Where's Ant Wright right now? Where's he at on Twitter? Because Ant Wright was coming at UConn fans hard. Um, let's take a look at this. Let's see if he. I mean, maybe he blocked a bunch of us. I'm sure. I guarantee if I message something to him now, he get, he's gonna be. Uh, let's see. All he's posted is that about the this is an over and back, all that stuff. Um, that one call. What about the goaltending? Listen, I'll just say this about um Hey guys, if you don't know what that means, Mr. Drummings, no disrespect to you. Worship who you want to worship. Um the six god is a tribute to Drake. So chill out. All right. Um, appreciate the love on the podcast, but let's 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 relax on the religious stuff. Okay. Thank you. Um let me tell you something. Um Ant Wright, who was talking all kinds of shh about how UConn didn't have the guys, you know, uh Mason Gillis is gonna be, you know, moving guys on defense, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. He did. He did um, give them a lot of love about their set pieces because he's not an idiot. He did play basketball. But um, look, the Big Ten is a nice conference, and they get a lot of love for football, and they're a physical brand of basketball. But when it comes to athleticism, when it comes to precision, when it comes to winning titles, you leave that to the Big East. And frankly, next in line is the ACC. You can't even can't even debate it. SEC is way down the list. Pac-12 doesn't exist anymore. Um, so, Big Ten basketball is weak. Ryan Harrison ran through them three and zero. Wisconsin, Illinois, Purdue. FanDuel. Summertime means baseball, the NBA Finals, and more, and you can bet it all on FanDuel. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $200 you can use to bet on everything from Finals MVP to who's going to hit the, the next one out of the park. Visit FanDuel.com slash lock on and add a big win to your summer bucket list. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Bye-bye. Um, what else we got, guys? Um, <laughs> just, just still cheesing, man. Get a sip of water here. Um, um, yeah, no, I, uh, Wes, you have yourself a great night. I'm going to stay on for about five, six more minutes. And, then I'm going to go enjoy myself before I pass out. Um, just a just a phenomenal game. 
I, I was I wasn't even nervous because I looked at I looked at the Zach Eady situation like this. Uh, if just like the way Alabama played the the first first game of the Final Four, not sustainable. They were not going to be able to um, keep up that pace. I think he started like six of eight. He was like scoring every one of their points, and I was going, okay, as long as we don't get into foul trouble. And even though we did. That's how good this UConn team is. I tweeted this out. You can get mad at me all you want. Without that whistle, and shout out my man Aaron Torres on Fox Sports because he has been banging that drum and he's been getting crap about it all the time about how oh, he's just a hater, he's just a UConn homer. Look, you can be a homer and still be objective. Newsflash. UConn is the best team in basketball they have been all year. So all of this stuff um, about how Purdue was going to diminish that because of Zach E and how they've, they've gotten so much better at shooting the three. Well, what do you do when you take away their, basically their best option, which is not allowing Zach Eady to pass out of the post and scrambling when you have an answer for Zach Eady. And I know that sounds stupid because he scored 37 points and I'm sure I'll get killed for it. But the answer is, you just let someone go one on one. We saw it all year, all year with this UConn team, in particular when it's a team that has given them trouble or there's some type of revenge or some kind of angle that Dan Hurley can play to talk through about how good the other people are talking about Purdue. Jeff Goodman picked Purdue today. What a shock there. Um, how, how good of predictions has that guy been? Um, I'm sure he looks good in orange. Inside joke. Um, let's see some of this stuff. Uh, let's see. UConn's perimeter defense dominated this game. Elite, elite, elite. So disciplined. That's from Ant Wright, and that is 100% true. Oh, and by the way, Homer that I am, I talked about that earlier today. How Steph Castle, how Cam Spencer, how Tristan Newton were going to dominate the Purdue guards. And I was laughed at by Purdue. Apparently it was 80-20 for Purdue fans-wise. But I'm pausing right now the one shining moment so I can watch that when I'm done here. Laugh all you, all you want. Um, yeah, I mean, listen, this is 100% true. What would let me ask? Let me ask anybody that's still in the trap. Um, let's let's uh, let's talk through this. What would the score have been if UConn got a fair whistle? Would they have won by thirty? Would they have won by twenty five? I think they push it to 25, 26 points tonight. If they if they get that whistle the way it should have been, um, they tried their damnedest to get. Our guy, Zach Eady, um, as many points as possible. I, and I asked this to Jaden Daly. He's a he's a veteran um, journalist in New York. Maybe you guys can tell me. Why doesn't anyone talk about how much how much she uh, or how much crap um, Zach Eady talks on the court? How dirty he is. How the elbows he gives. Um, I You know. It's just it's just silliness, and it and it cracks me up. It's like, bro, you won the genetic lottery, you know, for basketball. You're seven foot four, three hundred pounds, and you have pretty good footwork. You're not tougher than everybody. You're definitely not better than everybody. And it's not just that he's tall. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying I'm not saying the the lazy. Oh, he's just seven four, and all he does is dunk on people. But the idea that he would have this demonstrative attitude, like he's like it, it just he's just the guy that I feel like tries too hard. Um you know. It just it just is what it is. It just cracks me up because I don't think we have players that look that are not like genuine. Like Cam is genuinely an arrogant prick. Like he just is. He, and that's okay. Like that's who his personality is. Dan Hurley, same thing. Steph Castle is genuinely just carries himself with confidence but he doesn't like like their attitude 
is very similar to this. I remember one time this year, Steph Castle fell on the ground and a, and a player from the other team came over to try to help him up and he went, like, don't touch me. He waited for his team to come over to help, to help him get picked up. That's, that's just who they are. Alex Caravan, just a chill kid. Donovan Klingon seems like he's fun and like just outworthy. Um, I don't care. I honestly, and, and this doesn't bother me at all. I don't care that Zach, Zach Eady can drop F bombs all he wants. I can't right now because the podcast network doesn't allow us to swear. But if you saw me watching the game, I probably dropped a few. Um, I have the same colorful language that Dan Hurley and uh, Cam Spencer have. Um, but that doesn't bother me. What bothers me is those little smirks, like the way he looks at people, like, like you know, that like he thinks he's better than. Um, and again, it just looks forced. So, look, guys, I'm going to go. Um, if you just jumped on, I apologize. I really appreciate each and every one of you. I'd like to also reiterate again that since I started this podcast, UConn is undefeated. In fact, before I go, let's take a look at how many games in a row UConn has won since I started this podcast. <laughs> Why not? I'm going to toot my own horn. If, if uh, you know people aren't, won't, won't do it for me, I might as well do it myself. Let's go ahead and look at UConn, 37-3, and three, back-to-back national champions. UConn's two-year run is the most dominant in NCAA history. I agree with you, Mr. Former ACC Coach of the Year. Uh, so I started this podcast, I think, right before the Seton Hall game. Let's look at the let's look at the date. I think it is March third. May have started Villanova. Let's see. Nope, it was March third. Okay, so since March third. I've done countless shows. Okay. So let's go. I've done one, two, three, four, five, six, plus the three. Now that's so six games and then six in the tournament. So I'm on a 12 game winning streak. So we'll see how long that goes next year. Um, Eric, love you, man. I love all of my um, UConn fans. I don't care how obnoxious we are. We're all the best. Um, 99 is my favorite team, 1,000%. I think Ryan said 04 was his favorite team. Awesome, too. <laughs> yep, Steven, I've witnessed all six myself. Oh, yeah, go to, go to bed, dude. I'm getting up soon too, as well. Um, uh, uh, Steven, yeah, man, I've seen them all. Uh, but anyway, listen, congratulations to the Yukon Huskies, sixth national title, one more than Duke. Gotta love it. Um, Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube, and now it's also available on the Amazon Fire TV in the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you, covering 24-7, the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV channels app. This has been another episode of Locked On UConn. I hope you enjoyed the refurbished post-game show live episode of Locked on Yukon on this Monday summer edition. I'm your host, Mark Zanetto, asking you to stay locked in, stay connected, make sure your toughness meter is always rising. And as always, as always, go Huskies.